Welcome to SolidWorks Education Designing a Student Race Vehicle, Tires and Wheels. My name is Marie Planchard and I'm Director of Worldwide Education Markets and Curriculum Development for DS SolidWorks Corp. While I was working at my father's garage in high school, my dad would always say, tires and brakes are the most important part of the car. You could argue with that fact, but we're going to start with a tire. You want to select the tire that is appropriate for the contest. Whether you're in the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers quarter scale tractor competition, or the Baja competition, or an SAE competition, the tire supports vehicle loads and cushions against the road surface. The tire develops forces and moment. You want to select a wheel that's appropriate for the contest. Driving forces and moments act on the front wheels. The wheel connects to a hub rotor assembly. So you want to think about the parts you will be connecting to as you create your first assembly. The hub rotor assembly connects to the wheel bearings upright and spindle. This leads to suspension design, so we want to make sure we recognize that the spindle will contain planes in the upright, planes to the tie rod and the upper and lower control arm. It is important to use construction geometry, axes, and planes. Through a sketch, we want to keep track of the circular diameter of the wheel to understand its geometry in referencing the development of the suspension. So let's start with the wheel assembly. Click New. Double click Assembly. Browse and select the first component. I am using the inner rim as the first component in my assembly. This is the foundation of the assembly. It is fixed to the origin. Right click Float. Sometimes when you begin an assembly you don't like the original position. Select Rotate Component, select the component and select by Delta XYZ. Enter 90 to rotate the component about the Y axis. Click Apply. Click OK. The wheel has been rotated but it is free to move indicated by the minus sign. We want to create mates to fix and reduce degrees of freedom. Select the front plane of the assembly. Select the right plane of the inner rim. Click Mate. Select Coincident. Select the top plane of the assembly. Select the top plane of the rim, click Coincident. Select the front plane of the rim, select the right plane of the assembly, click Coincident. Three mates fully define the rim. There is no longer a minus sign. Let's insert a reference axis between the right plane and the top plane. Rename axis 1 to wheel. We might use this a little bit later. The design library allows you to organize your materials into folders. Click Add Folder. I selected Tire and Wheel, which is the folder that contains all the information I'm going to use in this assembly. Click and drag in the outer rim. Notice that there are a series of holes on the outer rim that correspond to the holes on the inner rim. Click the cylindrical face of the outer rim hole. Click the cylindrical face of the inner rim hole. Concentric is selected by default. Click the green check mark. Click Mate Alignment to flip the direction. Create an additional concentric mate between two other holes of both the inner and outer rims. That way you can verify that the holes are aligned. Select the cylindrical faces of the two holes. Concentric is selected by default. Click OK. Lastly, we require a coincident mate. Select the back flat face of the inner wheel and select the flat face of the outer wheel. Coincident is selected by default. Click the green check mark. If you require a distance between two components, you can select Distance and then enter a value. Use the middle mouse button to rotate the model. Control 7 is a shortcut to an isometric view. Click and drag the center hub in from the design library. Select on the face, right click, Normal 2 view. Notice how the center portion of the wheel has an additional pattern of four holes. This is where the wheel fastens to the hub. There is also the front plane that goes through the center of the wheel. Click the front plane. Click the right plane of the rim. Flip the direction. 
Coincident is selected by default, click OK. By thinking ahead to the hub assembly, I will align the top hole of the center wheel to the rim top hole. Select the cylindrical faces, concentric is selected by default, click OK. Now we have left is faces. Select the flat circular inner face of the rim. Select the flat circular face of the center portion of the wheel. Coincident is selected by default, click OK. From the design library, insert the tire. Select the cylindrical face of the tire. Select the cylindrical face of the rim. Concentric is selected by default. Sometimes geometry can become so complex that you can't create one of the standard mates. In this case, I'm going to use a section view. With the section view, I can see the inside of the wheel and the inside of the tire. It is beneficial to utilize other types of view display, such as hidden lines visible, hidden lines removed, or wireframe. Zoom in to see how the tire will fit with the wheel. In this case, I am going to use planes to mate the tire to the rim. Select the right plane of the tire. Select the right plane of the rim. Coincident is selected by default, however I want to use a distance mate. That way I can control the relationship between the two planes. You can flip the dimension if required. Enter a value, click OK. Display the shaded view, uncheck section. Display the axes. The wheel axes and the center hub axes I will use later. Click Save. Models and images are courtesy of the University of Manitoba Polar Bear Racing. Thank you from the SolidWorks Education Team.